a massive shakeup in Kyiv coming as Putin is trying to court the MAGA GOP in the United States. In fact, one of the leaders of the MAGA GOP is in Moscow tonight. It's the man you see here with the MAGA leader, Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, possibly there in Moscow to interview Putin, definitely there as a Putin supporting celebrity. Just listen to how Russian state media is breathlessly celebrating his visit. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Simple Son. Um, as you just seen, Aaron Burnett for CNN uh, complaining about Tucker Carlson going to Russia to speak to Vladimir Putin. Um, we'll get it further into the clip. But my first thoughts of how, you know, people complain about somebody actually doing journalism. Um, how somebody's actually going and doing something that they never wanted to do. They fee- they, the, the fact that he's trying to figure out some kind of information uh, about Vladimir Putin, at least at, at, from a journalis- journalism perspective, um, it, it boggles my mind. Honestly, it doesn't really matter where information comes from sometimes. It, it, I haven't been doing this long. Um, I try to be as unbiased as possible, but at least I, I let you know my bias. We're we're held down. We're it, we're a slave to information. We're a slave to people's propaganda. We're a slave to the information brought to us by our government, other people's governments. Um, I I I at least try to bring some information that's publicly known, and you can make a decision on how you feel about it. Um, I try to bring information so y- you can come to a, a determination about my own bias. I- I'm very clear about my bias. I- I- I'm conservative. I-, I don't fall into one basket or another. I'm just plain conservative with with Christian values. So um, we're going to continue with this clip and um, see where it goes. Um, and I come back. And we're actually going to take a look at uh, Tucker Carlson's response, too, because I think I think it might be, you know, a, a very knowledgeable response that I think that all of us need to have going forward about journalism in its own. So um, I'll see you at this clip. Independent journalist Tucker Carlson has flown to Russia from the U.S., via Turkey to Vinukova Airport. He saw Spartacus Ballet at the Bolshoi Theater, had lunch in a nice restaurant, went for a ride around town, rode the subway. He charged his smartphone via a USB port and connected to a fast and free Wi-Fi internet. He charged his phone. Although they're knowing the details about the fact that it was during USB port may give him reason to think twice about all of this. But look at them talking about him like a celebrity. Everything he does on camera, breathlessly repeated. Now, it is unclear if an interview between Putin and Carlson will take place. But if it does, it gives Putin a chance to sit down with a big supporter. It might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Does he eat dogs? These are fair questions, and the answer to all of them is no. Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. I'll actually always remember watching that clip. I was standing in Ukraine 48 hours before the war began there. Well, Carlson then stood by Putin consistently all the way through. And that is why he can go to Moscow now without any fear of being summarily imprisoned. He's a hero. This was Putin's mouthpiece in the United States, somebody who had turned a blind eye to the atrocities committed by Putin because they were happening far away. Once vibrant towns turned to ruins, mass graves with dozens of bodies in the Kiev suburbs, a theater full of innocent women and children sheltering, bombed despite the giant world's children written on the roof, more than 200,000 Ukrainian soldiers killed or injured. And tonight, Putin is trying to seize on the fact that Zelensky's military appears to be in turmoil capitalizing on a moment of intense American political dysfunction. So now you hear her her explanation on why it's bad for Tucker Carlson to go to Russia and do this, right? The fact is, doesn't she realize the, the hypocrisy that she just talked about? How, you know, they talk about him doing this, charging his phone up, taking a ride, this or that, and calling that propaganda. 
how many times have you seen stories about Joe Biden eating ice cream or going to have, you know, dinner with a black family and they want to make sure that it's a black family. Make sure they, 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 they say he had dinner with a black family or going out to ride a bike or doing X, Y, or Z on a beach. Uh, no, no, no. The war's going great. No, nope, economy's great. You know, always talk positive. How many times have you heard that? It's all propaganda. Every bit of it. Without, you know, pointing out the truth or pointing out the fact that you have a bias, that it actually is a propagandized sentences that you're using, it's always, by omission, it's propaganda. At the end of the day, it just is. So we're going to check out uh, Tucker Carlson, um, and every now and then I'm going to pop in, and um, if he says something I like, you know, I'll tell you. If he says something I disagree with, I'm going to let you know. But let's check this out. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we thought about it carefully over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have no real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. And just to stop in the middle of this, I had to, I had to point this out. Just, just the perception of you know, what right and wrong is from our own government's perspective and the perception of how much we're paying for it, not just monetarily, but security reasons. Um, the fact that anything, a World War III, a nuclear war could pop off at any moment. Um, we have to be well aware and be ready for that as Americans. Um, and, uh, you know, I had to jump in there because it, he's, it, that makes so much sense that, you know, our own government just by omission lies to us. So we'll get back into the clip. The war in Ukraine is a human disaster. It's left hundreds of thousands of people dead an entire generation of young Ukrainians, and has depopulated the largest country in Europe. But the long-term effects are even more profound. This war has utterly reshaped the global military and trade alliances, and the sanctions that followed have as well. And in total, they have upended the world economy. The post-World War II economic order, the system that guaranteed prosperity in the West for more than 80 years, is coming apart very fast, and along with it, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. These are not small changes. They are history-altering developments. They will define the lives of our grandchildren. Um, I have to disagree with Tucker Warren with one thing. Uh, it's not going to upend the lives of our grandchildren. It's going to upend our lives as we know it. Um, there's so much we could lose. Uh, our power, our stake, and I don't think, you know, honestly, I don't think the left realizes how important it is for us to stay at the top of the food chain because the fact is we've made lots of enemies. Even our allies, some of our allies don't even like us. The moment that we aren't showing strength, the moment that we aren't the top dog, the moment that economically or, you know, militarily we're not on top, they're coming for us. They're all going to come for us. They're going to come for you. They're going to come for me. They're going to invade. They're going to see a fracture in our own government and our own people. And they're going to come for us. Right? I don't think they understand that. And I believe that that's just, you know, doomsayer speak. It's not. It, it, ask anybody if, if that's the reason why we should never have secession. We should never allow Texas or California or any other state in the union to succeed. The union because of that division will only cause a fissure an even larger gap and foreign influence into our nation so the moment that we're not economically or militarily the superpower one and only on planet earth there's going to be somebody who's going to test our authority and yeah our authority i'm saying the words authority we should have absolute authority over planet earth because we are the greatest nation to ever, ever exist. Um, we are more protected and free in our nation than anywhere else on earth. As much as people might not believe that, we are. We just need to tighten our belts a little bit more. 
So let's get back into the clip. Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East what the future looks like. And yet the populations of the English-speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they think that because no one has told them the truth. Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they do that mostly by omission. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they have done scores of interviews with Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions, specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. And see, that goes back to the, the propaganda, you know, our, again, our own government, our, our media outlets, the vast majority of them are, are propaganda. So, I mean, if you want to say that, that Tucker Carlson himself right now is doing some sort of form of propaganda, fine. He probably is. Let's, let's, I'll agree with that. But you have to also agree that every other media outlet major or minor, is also doing their own form of propaganda. So, yes, I agree. Tucker Carlson is doing some form of biased propaganda for himself or some interest or anything, right? Sure, no problem. But just know that it, when it comes to the sliding scale method of measuring this, he's the least of our problems when it comes to media outlets. He is, he is telling us more truth than... All other mainstream media outlets combined. So if you don't want to get into a war, maybe we need to change our mindsets. So let's get back into the clip. That is not journalism. It is government propaganda. Propaganda of the ugliest kind, the kind that kills people. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this, promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand. Not a single Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict. Vladimir Putin. Well, they're not going to interview him because the fact that if they if they interview him, then they're going to see you, the viewer, are going to see at least some level equality between one leader to another, right? So it, there's going to be they're afraid that people are going to think to themselves, well, it's just one side against the other, you know, Russia against Ukraine. They they want you to believe that Russia is the greatest evil. Again, I'm not saying they're good, not one bit. I'm just saying there might be more complicated, complex issues going on there that we don't realize. Um, the fact that Ukraine is filled with all ex-Nazis who have this 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 idea that what real racism actually looks like, not not perceived, you know, fantasy uh, racism that you find in America for the most part, but actual racism. These people will will genocide you without a problem. That's the kind of racism that they they embark on. So that's, I'm, I had to jump back in on that. Let's get back into it. Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. And we have the right to tell them about it because we are Americans too. Freedom of speech is our birthright. We were born with the right to say what we believe. That right cannot be taken away no matter who is in the White House. Um, I gotta disagree with Tucker Carlson one more time. A right can be taken away. A right isn't a physical item. You can't feel it, you can't touch it, can't taste it, you don't know what it's made out of. What it is, it's, it's a, a fantastical idea that we implement with force. If you run out of people to enforce the idea of freedom of speech, you will no longer have freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is just implicated in to how many bullets you can shoot people with to stop them from trying to take away your right to speak. You're not born. It's not an unalienable li right. Rights are not unalienable. They can take and be taken away all the time. Any right at any time with any law by any people, men, but any groups of men. So... He, he's he's 100% wrong. You weren't born with the right 
of freedom of speech. You were granted the ability to speak freely because enough people were willing to kill and die for it. It's not. It can be taken away at any moment. So he, I, I, I think he's just being, you know, not facetious, but he's being, you know, platitude basically. So we'll get back into it. I just had to pop in on and say that. But they're trying anyway. Almost three years ago, the Biden administration illegally spied on our text messages and then leaked the contents to their servants in the news media. They did this in order to stop a Putin interview that we were planning. Last month, we're pretty certain they did exactly the same thing once again. But this time, we came to Moscow anyway. Just as a point of commentary, I believe him 100%. I believe him that that they do things like this all the time. Our, we know our government spies on us. They've been getting caught doing it for decades now. Um, so it's not, I, I don't, I don't put it past anybody in the government to do that to him. So I, I actually believe him when he says that. Let's get back into it. We're not here because we love Vladimir Putin. We are here because we love the United States and we want it to remain prosperous and free. We paid for this trip ourselves. We took no money from any government or group, nor are we charging people to see the interview. It is not behind a paywall. Anyone can watch the entire thing, shot live to tape and unedited, on our website, TuckerCarlson.com. Elon Musk, to his great credit, has promised not to suppress or block this interview once we post it on his platform, X, and we're grateful for that. Western governments, by contrast, will certainly do their best to censor this video on other less principled platforms because that's what they do. They are afraid of information they can't control. But you have no reason to be afraid of it. We are not encouraging you to agree with what Putin may say in this interview, but we are urging you to watch it. You should know as much as you can. And then, like a free citizen and not a slave, you can decide for yourself. Thanks. So now you hear that. Um, he's been promised by uh, Elon Musk of X that he wasn't going to suppress the interview or not show it off, whatever. The fact that he had to say that, the fact that Tucker Carlson had to point out that you know, this person of a social media platform where he posts, where people post information like this all the time, I'm not going to suppress it. And the fact that he had to point out that other platforms, including our own government, will try to suppress this this form of freedom of press is amazing to me. It's so absurd. So that just brings it back to, you know, I was born with the right, to say whatever I want, freedom of speech, but the government suppresses my freedom of press. Doesn't he understand that they can suppress anything they want at any point in time because they have the power of enforcement? They have enough people to enforce that. So that means that could take away your power at any moment. You, you, you heard CNN's uh, biased point of view because they obviously don't like Tucker Carlson. You heard Tucker Carlson's explanation of why he's doing this and what he's doing uh, again make the choice on your own what do you feel does it does this feel like something you know that's that's perfectly fine it, this he, as he said just in the end it's not that you have to agree with Putin it's just that you should hear what he has to say because at the very least you should know thy enemy even from an you know a government independent research informational point of view they should want to know what putin has to say regardless of whether it is actually propaganda or not because it will be propaganda whatever he says will be propaganda everything is propaganda at some point not an advertisement you see on television technically whether they want to see it or not is actually propaganda because you're you're proposing that this idea this product this whatever is better than your competitors or the other idea or the other product so everything at the end of the day every journalism it has some form of propaganda even myself again but i want you to know my bias i'm i'm conservative christian values so anything i say you can put it through that lens and it will always be presented that way unless i i, I say otherwise unless some other better idea comes up so you've heard what both sides has to say. Um, I think it's nonsense that anybody had a problem with it in the first place. Uh, hopefully nothing comes of it. 
you know, bad for Tucker. Hopefully the government will try to come after him even more than they already do. So we'll have to see and wait. Um, when the interview comes out, I'll review it, see if it's worth uh, covering. And uh, hopefully you come back. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe if you enjoy all this. Share. Um, leave something in the comments. Tell me how I'm doing. And I thank you for coming by. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.